Here is the mailbag from a whole summer. I hope you find also something interesting for you. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. If you bought a Nano VNA or a Tiny SA Spectrum Analyzer, the chance you got such a plectrum here is high. It is to operate these devices via touchscreen, but I did not find it very comfortable. This is why I invested in this pen here. It has a hard piece here and very small and this is much more precise to work with it. Here is the listing. Two cost $1.15 plus $1.68 shipping, nearly $3 and I even have a small rubber band to attach to your device that you never lose it. The next one is in my one of my boxes. It is named Power 2 and and its name is PD adapter diverse voltages. And this is the chip or the board which is basically only one chip plus a USB-C connector. And if we look on the other side, we see markings 9 volt, 12 volt, 15 and 20 volts and an output. So this device here is compatible with the power delivery mode and it signals the power source which voltage it should present to the output. This one presents 9 volt to the output. If it has a dot, for example, at 15 volt, then it would present 15 volt. This is only a chip, but it has to be connected to a power source. This is the power source I choose. It is a beast. It has 3000 milliampere hours and has quite a lot of connections. But the most important is this one. This is the USB-C and PD compatible output. I connect here a USB-C cable and here I have a chip built in. It's a slightly different chip than the, the one I showed you. It can be switched to the different voltages. I do not like this uh, model particularly. This was the first one I got because if something happens, it might be that you get 20 volts instead of 15 or 12 volts. And this is usually not good. And if you drive an expensive device, then you can destroy it. This is why I decided to buy only chips with fixed voltages. And now the voltage comes out here, is filtered a little bit by this ferrite bead, which is a standard for me in my setups. And it goes to these power poles. And here we can measure how much voltage we get now. I could use a standard voltage meter, but I have something else to show to you. This is a power meter for DC and if we connect our device here, I hope you see it. It has close to 15 volts. Of course, there is no wattage, wattage and there is no uh, current available. Now, this device measures the energy, power consumption and also the milliampere hours, which is interesting. If you work with batteries, then you can see how much battery capacity is left and it should go up to 150 ampere. I have to admit I did not test it, but up to about 10 amperes I tested it and it works fine. And the readings are quite precise for the price of this device. And here I connect then whatever is needed. In my case, it is a portable ham radio station. And talking about these Anderson power poles, they are quite flexible. I use them often for 12 volt cabling they cannot be mixed, they do not match here, just like that. And this is the crimper you need for these power poles or it's advisable to use it. It's from Ivis and Ivis seems to be a good brand. I have a few crimpers from them and they are always of a reasonable quality for its price. 
And this one uh, is a very special one just for these power poles, for 15, 30 and 45 ampere versions. Quite handy if you work with Anderson power poles. Here is the listing. You get them in 9, 12, 15 and 20 volt versions, as we saw before. And one is $2.79. And here is the crimper. It's $39, free shipping. The next is a power operational amplifier called OPA549. This here is the chip and you see it will dissipate quite a lot of power because of this heatsink here. Why would you want such a power amplifier? It has the input here, it has a pre-amplifier and it has the power amplifier and the output is here and you already see it has minus and plus voltage and it can be fed with up to plus and minus 30 volts and its maximum ampere is 5. The interesting thing is it works also for DC so you can drive for example motors and other things. I bought this one to be connected to my signal generator to create different waveforms but with power. Usually the signal generators do not have a lot of power and you cannot drive anything with them. By the way, you get also OPA544 and OPA541 with slightly different characteristics. I choose the 549 for my purpose. But as I said, you need quite a strong power supply, plus minus power supply, which is very rare, but I found one which has plus minus 30 volts. You see here, written down by the manufacturer. It has much, much more power than needed. I did not find an appropriate power supply. And in this case, anyway, bigger is better. So you have enough capacitance to filter the ripple and stuff like that. These two boards in a nice case will be my power amplifier of the future. Here is the listing. It costs roughly $40, including shipping. And here are its parameters. The output voltage range is 54 volts peak peak if you feed it with plus minus 30 volt. So you lose 6 volts. And the output current is 8 ampere, but it is set to 6 ampere on this board. And also, if you read the data sheet, you will not get 6 ampere all the time. It amplifies 33 times, so my signal generator is capable to drive it to the full 54 volt peak peak. Here is the OPA 541. It has a similar price and also the OPA 544 is available. It is a slightly smaller chip and also cost less. You see, it only supports 2 ampere. And here is the power supply. It delivers 600 watts and I choose the 30 volt version, which is $39 including shipping. Sometimes I have to solder or to desolder SMD parts. Now you can buy heated plates or hot plates for this purpose, but they are quite expensive and if I just need it very rarely, I thought I'd try something else. I bought this 300 watt heat element. It is quite adventurous. It is just a aluminium and an NTC resistor inside. It has not a lot of regulation, but it seems to work. What it has to do is it has to provide roughly 200 degrees centigrade and let's try if it does. I put this one here. Here I have my transformer that I do not need to start with 200 volts or 240 volts. To measure the temperature I have here the sensor and this display. It is quite hot today because the weather now is beautiful outside 
just when we returned from our trip, which was quite rainy, the weather got better. So that is bad luck. Anyway, now I connect it to power. Nothing happened. It's clear it is only zero volt. Now I try with maybe 50 volt. And let's see if something happens. Uh, a little bit so. We need more power. 100 volt. And now it already increases faster. So 150 volt. Still okay. Now it starts to go up quite fast. Two hundred volt, and now we are above one hundred degrees, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty. Now it's going up quite fast. Now we are at two hundred and thirty volts, and you see it still moves up. By the way, this NTC resistor gets bigger and bigger, the warmer it gets, so it should be a natural heat stabilization. Now we have 207 degrees, now let's put a little bit of SMD solder paste and really it melts. So the whole thing seems to work and we can switch it off. Otherwise, our wood will start to burn probably. Now, of course, for all the children watching this channel, don't do this at home without supervision, etc., etc. So success, let's check the listing. Here is the listing, it is uh, roughly $5, including shipping, the one I have. And this is quite a cheap price compared to the $90 or so of this very modern plate. Of course, it cannot be compared, but if I have one or two PCBs every month or so, it might be okay to use something like that. Now you get also other brands, also with 300 watts. And here you see how they do it. They solder or desolder LEDs just putting it on the plate. And this one even has feet and is cheaper. Another possibility to desolder small SMD parts could also be this product here, which has two soldering irons for each side of the SMD component. It seems to be a low quality, but maybe for infrequent usage, it is still okay. Of course, this is the advantage of this process is you only heat one SMD. With the plates from before, you heat the whole PCB. Now for soldering, this is perfect. For desoldering, this is probably the better solution because you heat up only one single SMD component. The next parts are around a topic. It is LiFepo 4 batteries. First, I have this LiFepo 4 battery. It has 600 milliampere hour, a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts, maximum voltage of 6, 3.6 volt, which is ideal to drive directly our microcontrollers. And 600 milliampere for this small farm factor is quite good. Now the question always if I get batteries is, is this a fake battery or does it hold the expectations of 600 milliampere hour? To prove this, I have to test the batteries when they arrive. And I found this board with all the different sized battery holders. And it's interesting if we turn it around, we see that here all plus holes are connected to this pin, all minus are connected to this pin. And then we have two pins here, which are connected with a small trace only and this is for the four wire method. Here we attach the load and here we attach the voltmeter. 
With this board I can test this size, this size and even the largest one. For the smallest one I do not have a rechargeable battery but for this small socket I have this small uh, 14250 non-rechargeable battery or primary battery. And the last part is this one here. This is a charger, a LIFEPO 4 charger, which is adapted to this chemistry. I plan to do a video about this chemistry in the near future. Now I should have everything to show you how to use it. And here is the listing. The batteries for pieces are $7 and the shipping is quite expensive these days. And the shipping also here in Europe always comes through Amsterdam for my batteries because these batteries can no more be shipped to it with normal uh, mail services. This is the LifeEPO 4 charger module. It is good for one ampere, which is perfect for many applications for the smaller batteries. They come in five pieces and they cost $15. So compared to the TP4056, they are quite expensive. And here is the battery holder. This one is less expensive, $4.20, including shipping. Now the question is, of course, did it fulfill the expectations of 600 milliampere hours? Yes, it did. I checked it and it was even a little bit higher than 600 milliampere. I only tested one, but usually if one is okay, the others are also okay. I also got one recently, which did not fulfill the expectations with only about a third of its capacity. And I filed a dispute as I always do, because I think our suppliers have to learn that cheating is no option. And here is one of the most innovative products during the last few uh, months or even years. It has a special logo on it. You might have recognized it. It is an air tag from Apple. You can also get something similar from uh, Samsung, but since I still use iPhones, I use the air tag. Now, what is revolutionary on this tag? There are a few things. One is from a technological point of view, they use ultra wideband technology, which not only can measure distance, but also show you the direction where your air tag is. Very interesting because it works only with one antenna and not with several antennas and triangulation as in the past. The second innovative idea is that this device also has a Bluetooth transmitter, like a beacon or so, and it can be connected with your iPhone. Now this is nothing special. This can be done by each beacon, but this device is also recognized by all other iPhones on the whole world. And if you put this on your bicycle, for example, as we did when we did our trip to the North Sea, then if somebody steals your bike, you can set this air tag to lost and as soon as anybody with an iPhone passes close by your bike, your stolen bike, you get an update where your bike is. Only Google and Apple have the possibility to include such a functionality in their operating systems. But I find the idea to use available technology like a GPS tracker, like Bluetooth, like millions of iPhones and just add a $30 device to create a global infrastructure, I find this quite interesting. This is why I will have a look at this ultra wide band technology and also show you the results of my tests across whole Europe on our 1000 kilometer trip with the bikes. And just to the right time came this Spectrum V6 receiver or Spectrum Analyzer. This is a quite interesting tool. It's quite heavy, all aluminum case. It has one transmitter and two receivers. It is a software defined radio and has a bandwidth from nearly zero to six gigahertz. 
Now this is nothing special, you, you could say. Also the Hack RF1, which is now five years old or so, has also this specification. But this one is different because its bandwidth is two times 125 megahertz. So you can see everything inside 125 megahertz. And why is this important? Ultra wide band technology, as the name says, uses a huge bandwidth. And this is why we can use such a technology to measure it. And this is the listing of the Spectran V6. It is produced by a small company in Germany. It is not a, exactly a cheap product, but we are supported by this company and they gave me one of these spectrum analyzers to use on my channel. So I hope the ultra wideband technology will be the first use case for this analyzer. This is a very old fashioned bell, a mechanical bell. Why did I buy one of those? You will see it in my mailbox notifier project. I wanted a very special sound when the postman brings my China packets. I already built the electronics integration to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. And as soon as the postman brings the packets, it rings. Here is the listing. I bought the 12 volt DC version, but because this version consumes a lot of current in the beginning, I would prefer the 220 volt AC version because I have uh, 220 volt everywhere available. It costs around $10, including shipping, but it's worthwhile because of its unique sound. The last two things today are two new development boards. One is the DTBL10 and it contains a RISC-V CPU. It is considered to be a ESP8266 competitor. You see it only has a few pins and has a small form factor. It has the usual components of a development board, USB adapter and a 5 volt to 3.3 volt voltage regulator. And the second one contains a RTL8720 chip. And this, the interesting thing is, you probably see it here, it has a different antenna construction than the ESP8266 or the ESP32s. It has 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi. This is the first chip I know of with 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I think Expressive is working also in this direction, but this is now available on AliExpress. Also here you see the serial to USB converter and the voltage converter, and they even have a NeoPixel on it. The listing of the DTBL10 RISC-V chip or board is here. It costs nearly $10, particularly because of this expensive shipping. I think for $10, this is way too expensive because it does not have the capabilities of an ESP32, but maybe you find a better deal or maybe they become cheaper in the future. It looks like that we get Arduino support for these RISC MCUs, but the last changes were nine months ago. Maybe you played around with it, so please comment if you have information, if this works or if we find a different uh, core for this uh, RISC MCU or if you have any other experience to share with us. The next is the RTL8720. The same applies here, quite expensive, but with this 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi, it is interesting to try once, I think. And if you have problems, with a crowded 2.4 gigahertz band, it might be a good solution for your problem. Also here, it seems that we can get a support for the Arduino IDE. Seeds obviously is here pushing this chip. Also here, I'm interested in your feedback if you have already played around with this device. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. 
If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.